Something I wanted to make a short video talking about a little bit here, not only to bring you guys the information because it is something I haven't talked about yet, and this is information that came out pretty much around the same exact time, I think it was at the same time actually in the same article, when we got the official information on the PlayStation 5, the official specifications. Obviously we don't have all the specs yet, but we do have a pretty good idea of just how big of an upgrade the PlayStation 5 is going to be over the PlayStation 4, and something that uh, Mark Cerny did give us a little bit of information on, and very little bit, we're still going to have to do a lot of speculation here, is the price point of this console. How much can we expect it to be? It says here that there's no question that the PlayStation 5 sounds incredible, but considering its impressive roster of features, it also sounds pretty pricey. As you probably already know, SSD drives don't exactly come cheap, and nor does that kind of processing power that the platform uh, holders boasting about. But given the success of the PlayStation 4 at its original $399 price point, we reckon that the company realizes it can't go with a $599 with its next-gen device. Writing on Twitter, Wired senior correspondent Peter Rubin shed a little light on what we can expect price-wise by sharing a snippet from his interview with system architect Mark Cerny. I believe that we will be able to release it at an SRP, which stands for Suggested Retail Price, that will be appealing to gamers in light of its advanced feature set. Asked to clarify if the comment meant it may be on the higher side, the knack man shut the conversation down. That's about all I can say about it. So obviously, very little information there, but honestly, I think we can definitely try to gauge a rational price point with what he's saying here. I think we could gauge a rational price point without that information, but when he says it's going to be appealing, well, in my opinion, that really only leaves two price points that we can honestly go with here. I think the first one is obviously that $399 price point, the $400 mark, which something tells me that is a price point that Sony would love to sell their console at because we have to look at the PlayStation 4 and surely... Sony looks at the PlayStation 4, they look at the price that it launched at, and they see the success, and they probably put the two together, you know? Um, there's no denying that a lot of people decided to upgrade to the PlayStation 4 at the beginning of this generation, because not only was it the more powerful console and the more capable console, but it was also cheaper, because it didn't come with a camera bundled in. So, obviously, this time around, you know, looking at what we know of the PlayStation 5, especially as this article mentioned here with the SSD and how expensive how expensive they can be, I could also see, see it end up being $500. Now, it's hard to say if the PlayStation 5 would sell as well or get off to as good of a start as the PS4 did with a $500 price point. I think there's a good chance it could, though, because I think things are a little bit different now, honestly. I feel like these days, you know, going into 2020, that's probably obviously when the PlayStation, well, that is when the PlayStation 5 is most likely to launch. We know it's not coming this year for sure. That's been confirmed by Sony. Going into 2020 and the idea that it will be launching holiday 2020, I don't know. I feel like things are just a little bit different these days where people are a little bit more willing to spend more on something that is definitely going to be more advanced and something that has a lot of tech, you know, packed into it. And hearing about the PlayStation 5 and what it's going to be capable of, we know that Sony is not, um, they're not going to be releasing a console that's half-baked. We know that the PlayStation 5 is going to be something that's going to be very feature-rich. It's going to be a beast, you know, as I talked about before, even if the next Xbox Anaconda ends up being more powerful than it, I still think the PlayStation 5 will certainly be able to hold its own. I do not think this is going to be a PlayStation 4 Pro slash Xbox One X situation. Um, I think it's going to be a really, really solid console. And uh, I think the price is going to reflect that, honestly. I think if there's anything the Xbox One X has proven is that gamers definitely will pay more for a substantial upgrade when it comes to hardware because one one thing I can give Xbox is that with the Xbox One X it is a fantastic piece of hardware they did a very good job with the development of this console and I think that Sony may have learned something from that and that is that well gamers and people in general they will pay more 
for a better product. And I think that Sony is really just focused in here with the PlayStation 5 on delivering something that is going to be a meaningful upgrade. I mean, when it comes to me personally, I would definitely pay $100 more knowing that I'm going to get a lot more in return when it comes to the idea of the PlayStation 5 being $500 at launch. But again, we do have to think about the terminology he's using here. He's using the word appealing. So when you think about pricing and consumers, appealing usually means cheaper, right? Like that's what ends up being more appealing to customers. Um, so who knows? It could end up being 400. It could end up being 500. But I definitely wanted to take a little bit of time to talk about this information because I do find it interesting. Um, I mean, Mark certainly didn't have to say anything about the pricing. I'm sure he probably said this to kind of, you know, stop people from speculating it's going to be $700, it's going to be an $800 console. No, it's not. Sony has learned from the PS3 that you do not go to the $600 price point and you certainly don't go beyond the $600 price point. So my guess is anywhere between $400 and $500 and I think $500 would be the cap. I do not see the PlayStation 5 being more than that. Um, and I definitely don't see it being less than 400. So at this point, I'm going to ask you guys to leave your thoughts down below. What do you think about what Mark Cerny had to say here about the price being appealing when it comes to the PS5? How much are you expecting it to be? How much do you want it to be? And how much are you willing to pay to upgrade to the PlayStation 5? Be sure to leave this video a like if you did enjoy it. It really helps it out. Subscribe to the channel if you're new. Hit the bell notification icon and feel free to share the video out on top of all that. But until next time, guys, take care.